Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 10 of Caspi's Space Race. And we start with our Eve probe, bound for Eve, obviously, hence it being called Eve Probe. I've been very un uninventive with this name, I'm running two series in which I have to constantly name probes, so, uh, yeah, not being the most inventive. But yeah, we're getting this all uh, pointed the right way, so that we can perform our 1000 meter per second burn. Um, sorry, I just had to stop there to downgrade the quality on the preview window, because I've started using... OBS, so the footage is a little heavier, but basically what we're doing here is um, performing our burn so that we can head on to EVE with the second stage of our rocket, actually. The rocket performed very well, um, and we ditched the uh, ditched second stage and onto the third stage. Oh, it looks like we performed that. Yeah, we performed that with a little bit of the third stage, and uh, yeah, here we are. Looks like we've got our encounter with EVE, um, but we need to tweak that a little bit. Uh, so when we get out uh, of the... Uh, sphere of Influence, we will, you know, put a tweak. But before we leave the Sphere of Influence, Icarus 1, the other uh, uh, Moho probe, is about to descend onto Moho. Now, this was the kind of faulty, well, not f a little faulty, but also just not super great probe. So it may actually uh, not manage to orbit Moho. Um, but the other one already landed first, uh, <laughs> probably. I kind of, I'm not sure about the chronology, but, you know, I mean... I definitely beat Penguin to Minmus because I got it there earlier in my turn than he did, and uh, I reckon Moho just because when I say things, they're usually true. Um, but yes, we're going to have to start transferring fuel into the central tank because the fuel lines aren't working. Well, they are, but um, it means it drains uh, fuel from one side of the spacecraft before it drains it from the other, which means it flips out, and that's not great. But yes, I'm just trying to kind of balance my uh, kind of uh, my uh, my vector so that we. Uh, keep our periapsis low but not in the surface of Moho, because that's not what you want. You don't want to, you know, hit Moho too hard. Um, I'm hoping this will be an orbiter, but it's kind of hard to say. This uh, stage is burning out pretty quickly. And we started burning way early because obviously it takes so long to slow down around Moho, and this was a much higher speed encounter than the other probe, um, because, well, I really screwed this one up somehow. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get lucky with Moho and sometimes you know. But there is the lander fuel as well, which might be able to pull me into orbit. Um, but I'm starting to think that that might not be the case. But my uh, my path is really distorting around Moho now, so it's uh, looking looking reasonably good. But yeah, I fire up the engine uh, probably a little too early because it burned so quickly. I didn't really need to do that. Um, and I'm burning off the retrograde vector because I was going to hit the surface, which probably wasn't a great idea. I really should have just used this as an impactor because we don't actually manage to get into orbit around Moho. Um, we distort ourselves quite a lot, but we just fall short, so maybe we'll encounter at some point, but I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't look like we will. Uh, but yes, we get 70 science for all of the money it cost. I'm pretty sure the plane that took this up here blew up as well, so it was probably, you know, about a hundred and something grand. I actually did sell my uh, blueprint for the Titan 1 to Penguin for a small amount of money, which uh, probably helps him a lot more than it helped me. I, uh, I mostly did that because I was being nice, actually, because he was going on holiday. I was like, ah, oh, well, you kind of got to do this. That's how he put it to me, actually. Anyway, talking of the Titan one, here's my uh, version, the one I made, because I'm a far superior plane designer, of course. Um, and we will be upgrading this later. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to let Penguin do any upgrades to this, because... Uh, well, I guess he can do his own upgrades, but if you look at anything like my upgrades, then he's going to have to pay me again. Um, so, yeah, and I'm going to do some pretty hefty upgrades, but yes, this is going to push on into orbit. And in its cargo bay, there is a science lab, because uh, <laughs> something Penguin pointed out is I haven't put up a science lab yet, which is probably a massive disadvantage for me, because uh, it produces a lot of science. So this is going to the moon to be my uh, science station out there, because basically you put a bunch of science into a lab, and it turns it into data, and then you can just have science, and it produces a lot of science if you put it in the right place. So I really mm, probably should have probably should have thought of that a little more. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think I might be falling behind on science, but I know I'm ahead on money, which might uh, help me a little. Um, I think Penguin was running a little low, maybe a million or something. I was quite easily on three million, a little more now because I uh, obviously um, I, I got well, I got a little more. I think I got like 155,000 from Penguin uh, for this design, which definitely is enough. I. He was very stingy about it. I was going to charge him like a million, but um, yeah, he didn't seem to go for that. Anyway, yes, we fire up the nuclear engines to get ourselves a little more thrust so that we can uh, 
get up to a really high speed, and we get up to about 1200 meters per second before we switch over, so yeah. Um, and luckily, also, Penguin doesn't seem to know how to return SSTOs, especially when he returned it from the moon, just kind of straight down. <laughs> it's like, firstly, you can't really return it from the moon. It's a plane with pretty flimsy wings, um, and I'm going to probably make a wing upgrade, which Penguin can't copy because he'll have to buy that again, which he's welcome to do, um, but it will the price will go up a lot. A, a lot of money. Because <laughs> what fool would sell his secrets? This fool. This fool right here sells his secrets. Because I'm nice. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That was a misguided. And I was like, ooh, money. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes. And to return it, you just have to, you know, skip out of the atmosphere a couple of times and slow down with the aerodynamics of the plane. Um, and I also realized I probably should have hidden some really scaled up RTGs in the craft, so it, like, cost them loads. Damn it, I could have done so many cool things! Should put some C4 in there that goes off randomly. Put a little engine inside that explodes it. Um, and that is the one he buys. That'd be great. I should have definitely done that. I should, why am I not sabotaging him more? Um, I think he's ahead on science. I need to start sabotaging. That's more of a penguin thing to do. He's the saboteur. Um, I'm just gonna have a sip of water. Alright, yeah, so here we are in orbit, rather nicely. I'm going to jettison that nose cone because we have a docking port under there, but this will be a station. And I think we do indeed have a scientist on board who will be able to start doing science once we fill this up with science, uh, with, with data and science. And we'll, uh, well, we'll, we're, we're sending a mission after this. It will go to the moon and grab, uh, I think, most of the rest of the science. I think there's a couple more biomes after this. But yes, I guess I'm going to have to start uh, working on some very high Delta V spacecraft that'll just get places first. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my plan. I could just unlock some kind of, um, well, warp drive would be great, but if I unlock, unlock warp drive, I win. So, uh, actually, I think you unlock, you have to unlock the big one to win this series. So if I get a small one first, yeah, but if you get the small warp drive, it's just like, oh, I got all of the science from everywhere in one turn. So, I mean, that might be kind of, you know. But, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, yes, we're planning our maneuver um, to get onto a trajectory to hit the moon. I think I'm going to go into a polar orbit. No, I'm going to go into an equatorial orbit just because it's easier like that. Um, probably a polar orbit would be better because then I can always get to it. But, uh, you know, I, I've forgotten exactly the reason I went for a non-polar orbit, but I did. So, yeah, um, this, is, this, this plane is incredibly useful. It was probably the one thing that would have let me beat Penguin, and I sold it. <laughs> no, I'm going to build a much, much better one. I actually, by the end of the episode, you'll see a much uh, cooler one with uh, some awesome interstellar technology, um, which should be pretty awesome. Uh, but yes, uh, we are on a good trajectory. We will be around the equator of the moon, and we'll be able to, um, well, when we get our science and things, we'll be able to... Uh, bring it up to the station and start processing it uh, and get a lot of science uh, all the time. I really should have done that earlier. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start lab spamming I think. Put them on the surface of the moon, put them around Midmus, surface of Midmus. Maybe I could just take one out into orbit of the sun if I put enough life support on it. This is a pretty heavy, uh, pretty high payload to orbit capability so I probably could definitely take a bunch of uh, life support out around the sun and just doom these Kerbals to live around the sun forever. Um, and if I put enough in here, I mean, I know this SSTO can actually land on Duna, so if I was really stingy, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Anyway, so here we are, just uh, coming up to the moon, and um, yeah, gonna get into orbit. This does have a lot of Delta V. It's good to have a nuclear entrance on it. Um, and at some point, maybe a more interstellar entrance, but well, we won't, We uh, you'll see all of that later. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna make some pretty serious advances to really push the push the envelope and uh, get all of the science. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Peng we're in pretty much the same orbit, totally by accident, as Penguin's uh, moon station, which is interesting. Maybe we'll hit it at some point by total accident. Uh, oh no, I drifted into your space. Oh, my engine's fired up. Oh god, I hit your station. Oh, what happened? Oh, what do you mean there was a missile on my plane? What do you mean I Macy Dean this shit? I should totally Macy Dean. No, this is a peaceful series where the only violence is verbal. Uh, anyway, so, like I said, we need to go to the moon and get science to fuel up our lab. So I've thrown Jebediah Kerman and another Kerbal who are, whose name I can't read because I'm using OBS now and apparently it's just Vegas hates that kind of footage, so I might have to go back to a different player. Um, I'm having to watch it in quarter quality at like a, a frame every 10 seconds. It occasionally gets better. But anyway, yes, this is just pretty much my standard uh, moon rocket at this point. It, this is actually Capollo 12. It's actually named Capollo 11 because I didn't bother renaming it because 
I forgot. Um, but yes, it's my nu uh, nuclear engine kind of lander that does at least two biomes on the moon and pr could probably go to all of the biomes on Minmus if I hadn't already been to all of them anyway. So, yeah. Um, we're just going to yeah get on into orbit and... Uh, and then, yeah, I think the second stage usually has enough fuel to kind of push me onto the moon a little bit. So, we, you, yeah, we have tons of Delta V in this. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going pretty well. I'm not sure who's going to win this uh, series, but it does seem like Penguins had a constant lead. But maybe I'll underdog it. Oh, and I've just got to decouple this because that was actually... I, there was, the nose cone was an impact experiment. Which, again, I forgot to put an antenna on this, so I can't use that. Uh, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> I forget things. Um... But yeah, and that may have also been useful for extra Delta V, but I just got rid of it anyway. But yeah, I mean, after this series is over, there is going to be the awesome Fall of Kerbin, as I've been doing a few preview videos on it, and I think Penguin has one before he went on holiday. Uh, he's getting back, I think, tomorrow, so yeah, we're going to power through this and then have a big-ass war again, because, well, Collaborative Warfare seems to, you know, have stopped. Aganarch is, uh, well, I mean, you know, he's busy and he's doing Aganarch things, and he's an actual adult with real people problems, so, I mean, you know, it's probably the last thing on his mind right now to be thinking, oh, yeah, I want to play KSP with a bunch of random people. <laughs> Although that will never not be on my mind. Um, but anyway, yes, I actually end up tweaking that maneuver a little bit um, so that we can get into a polar trajectory because I want to land in the northern basin of the moon, the nice little basin-y bit, um... Uh, in the north, hence northern basin, um, and then I'm going to jump down to another crater, which is near the uh, near the equator, the equator crater, um, and then I'm going to get on up to the station, and I should uh, be able to bring a bunch of science back as well. Um, yeah, so just science ban the shit out of this today, really. <laughs> um, you know, I do another launch. Oh, I do do another launch after this. I was like, oh god, did I forget a launch? That'd be pretty bad. Um, but yes, there we are in orbit, um, and I just need to. Maneuver. Well, I was going to see if I could maneuver onto the right path, but it would be a bunch more Delta V, which I don't really want to spend. So I'm just going to wait until the moon uh, rotates into the right angle for me to get uh, onto the northern basin. Um, but yeah, we've got a few things to do until then. Uh, namely, going and rescuing some Kerbals from um, Orbit of Mimus. So here we are with a cheap little rocket. Well, not a cheap rocket, just a fairly basic rocket. It's going to go and pick up two or three Kerbals for the sum of almost, well half a million to 600,000 funds, um, assuming I bring them back alive, which, um, I may have not put life support on this, which is fine, because there's no Kerbals in it right now, <laughs> but I'm gonna go pick stuff up on Minmus, and it takes more than the, more time than you have in the pod to get back, so... This might be another in a long line of screw-ups of this series that I have made. I've made a lot of very bad decisions in this series. I'm going to have some more water. I should probably replace it with vodka to make myself feel better about my bad decisions. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just never seem to get anything right in this series. In Road to Exploration, I've got this beautiful reusable system. You reusable rockets, reusable vehicles for landing on places, and it all works perfectly. And everything just always seems to go pretty great, except that one Moho probe. Uh, no one's even died. And then it comes to Space Race, and it all just falls apart. It's because it's too stressful. Too much stuff happens too quickly. It's not... I mean, I do enjoy doing this just because of the ridiculousness of, um, kind of... Well, it's just fun to kind of have a contest with KSP with someone else, but this isn't the kind of standard way I, I would usually play a KSP, as you can probably tell if you've seen uh, Road to Exploration. That's how I do it very slowly and methodically. Um, but this is kind of like this just sprint of me messing up and then Penguin calling me. Oh, no, he doesn't call me a Nazi in this. He's the, um, the, uh, uh, he's the, oh, pinko communist, the pinko communist over there trying to take our freedom to make money. Uh, and I'm, I'm America or something. Although I did land on the moon first, um, and Minmus first, and Moho first. And I'm pretty sure I've already landed on Drez. So I don't know what Penguin's saying. But, you know, crooked penguin. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna start just using Trump comebacks. Um, crooked penguin, and he's also probably from Kenya, I don't know. Let's just go, let's just go to Minmus, uh, where everything is fine. But anyway, while that's on its way, we uh, have to be back with our moon spacecraft. Uh, that's going to land and grab us all of the science from the, well, not all of the science, but a lot of the science, a hell of a lot. You get a lot of money when you do, well, you get a lot of science when you do two missions. I'm not actually being paid for this, but I have loads of money. Because, um, 
Well, because, you know, I don't crash my SSDOs that often. I mean, you know, usually about one out of two, but that's like way better than Penguin. His always explode. Um, and I do some pretty crazy landings when they do break, um, which, <laughs> just realized what happens at the end of this episode. Um, which, yeah, you'll see later. I may lose a front wheel, but I don't land until next episode, so it's fine. Mm. Finish my water and watch this descend onto the surface of the moon, where it will, well, do various things. Um, I just have two kerbals in here, because I've got this fun glitch right now, where um, I can't hire any more kerbals, so I have to save them. Otherwise, I have no more kerbals, and I don't seem to have that many anymore. I don't know where they go. I think I keep killing them. Um, and also, it doesn't seem to notice when... Uh, the game doesn't seem to know when kerbals aren't in... Um, uh, aren't, aren't, when they're, basically, when they're assigned to vehicles, it doesn't know. I think it's because I have to keep messing with the roster, because I have to keep splicing in Penguin's save files. I actually didn't do that this time, because... My save thing, it just won't load saves, so I'm gonna have to start doing it with quick saves, and oh, yeah, it's, it's starting to get very glitchy. <laughs> uh, which just adds to the hilarity of how ridiculous this is. So yes, we're getting all of the science, we'll get our scientist out to go and grab a surface sample, smash our helmet, she'll be fine. Um, you don't need air in space, there's tons of air on the moon, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, put down a flag, and then go and grab all the science and reset the experiments, which is also a bit, always a bit of a hoopla when you're um, trying to hover with this jetpack. Although I'm getting better at you know, jetpack hovering. Although it's kind of hard, you know, when you're trying to click on these things and you're just going all over the place. And uh, not quite as annoying as when you're using the RCS pack in um, space and the camera changes. I should really just not set it to auto camera and stop complaining. But I kind of like complaining, so yeah, I'm probably not going to do that. Anyway, so let's take off um, and go to the next part of the moon, which I think is the northwest crater, um, which is down this way. Um, and, yeah, just gonna, oh god, okay, okay, yeah, <laughs> just closing task manager, I was monitoring how much CPU usage this is using, because, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to start re-rendering the video, banding cams have been screwing up so much recently that I don't want to use that anymore, and Fraps records massive files, and open broadcast software is pretty good, and it's free, if, oh yeah, by the way, whenever people ask me, like, oh, what uh, recording software are you using, I'm, I usually say Bandicam, and they're like, is that free, I'm like, no, and you're like, well, I'm not buying that, it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I understand that, buying recording software sucks, and I kind of wish I hadn't bought Bandicam now, because it doesn't really work, um, so yeah, if you want to use a free uh, recording software, uh, use OBS, Open Broadcast Software. You have to do a little bit of setup, but it's fairly comprehensive and allows you to stream, which I don't really do that much anymore. I do want to continue streaming, but I'm very busy all of the time. Uh, but maybe at some point I'll just do a full-on live stream, because I, I do, like, I, well, I haven't done it in like a year. But, um, you know, at some point I'll do it again. Uh, over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash tapegaming. Um, Probably, oh, I haven't streamed in a long time, but uh, there's a good good streaming community, and if YouTube falls apart, or if I get banned because uh, Donald Trump bans, um, it sues people for, uh, you know, reporting on him in the media, then, you know, because that's what he wants. I don't know why I'm talking about him, but it came to mind that if you talk about Donald Trump, he might sue you. Um, even because, you know, fuck free speech, but, you know, fuck the First Amendment, but the Second Amendment, that's the good one. Uh, <laughs> oh, this has taken a downward spiral. Um, yeah, let's not talk about amendments, but if you are going to support one of them, you have to support all of them, I think. Um, really. You're talking about constitutional rights. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, this is what it feels like to dig a hole. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, maybe I'll start streaming again. Was the crux of that, but all it always seems to get political with me because I'm not too scared to talk about politics on the internet because it's fun. Um, and when someone's angry, that's even more fun. <laughs> and then when you're not angry and they're trying to scream at you, you're like, calm down, calm down, calm down. That's quite fun. Um, yeah, as you can tell, I'm an asshole. Um, so yeah, anyway, getting into orbit. No, you shouldn't. Uh, little people's beliefs. I, I don't believe in that. Um, but everyone should listen to everyone, and everyone should just be happy. And that is what I truly believe. So anyway, there we go. There's, that's me dug out of a hole. I said a nice thing. But anyway, here we are, just getting into orbit of... Oh, well, we're already in orbit, just getting our encounter. I think we're in front of the station, so if we burn prograde, increase the period of our orbit, we will get back around later than the enemy... Than the enemy? Than the station will get back around. So we'll arrive at the same time, if we're careful. Yeah, y'all click on the videos like, I want to hear some, I want to uh, look at, watch some KSP. Oh, he's talking about Trump again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there we are. There's the um, Moon Lab 1, as it's now called, not Titan 1. 
Um, but yes, we're just going to push our way onto there, just using the engine, because, well, we have a bunch of monopropellant as well, so. But it's, um, well, it's actually more efficient to burn your monopropellant first, because it's a lower ISP fuel, but it doesn't matter. I'm almost out of fuel, but there's fuel on the station, so it's fine. Well, in the plane, because it's so efficient, so efficient that Penguin just couldn't compete and have to buy I'm trying to spin this to make it sound like that was a good decision or like I'm better, but yeah, I may be good at SSTOs, but I'm not very good at business. <laughs> Which is weird, because like that seems like something I would be good at. I was being nice. Anyway. Um, yeah, you can see how massive this uh, the, the Titan 1 is compared to... Uh, this. Uh, so I'm going to grab all of the science. If you notice, which I didn't mention because I think I was talking about Donald Trump or something, uh, <laughs> I, I took double. I double report. I took double the science reports in the Northwest Crater, so I can um, put most put all of that in the lab and still have um, a bunch of science to take back. So it doubles my science output basically. Um, so yeah. Pro tip, tape tip, like a top tip, but a tape tip. And I'm going to add a bunch more science as well, because the more science we have in the lab, the more we get overall. So I'm pretty much going to fill it up until we have almost 750 data, or 750 science, whatever. Um, it's 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 all good. And yeah, now we're going to be producing about 12 science a day, because I'm leaving the other scientists there. So uh, yeah, they'll be stuck here forever, and I'll probably forget about them, and they will probably die. Um, so yes, <laughs> talking of people dying, uh, we're going to go rescue some kerbals-ish. Um, so we're getting to orbit. There's a couple in orbit here. Uh, there's actually three in orbit of Minmus right now, um, and there's a bunch in orbit of uh, Kerbin, which I can't see anymore because game glitches. So I might just have to cancel those contracts, uh, which kind of sucks. <laughs> Cause like, yeah. Well, anyway, um, that's probably me being a dick with the save file, uh, me being a dumbass even. Um, so yeah, there's a couple in orbit, in low orbit, going in the right direction, and then up really high above Mimus. There's one going in the wrong direction, so she's staying here. Um, she's not getting saved because she's very unreasonable with her trajectories. Uh, <laughs> so in conclusion, don't ever ask me to save you in space because I won't, uh, unless you're on the exact right path. Uh, but anyway, so we need to yes, just uh, change our orbit a little bit with a quick retrograde burn so that we um, encounter this spacecraft on the other side. Pick up the Kerbal, uh, grab the other Kerbal, and head on home to total safety and not dying. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, so we're just going to let it catch up with us and then go and save them. Yes, yeah, so, uh, saving Kerbals is actually a very profitable um, yeah, very pr profitable missions, you know, uh, these are each like 200 grand. I don't know what that is in hard mode, because usually I play in hard mode, but we're playing in normal so that money isn't quite such a crazy constraint. <laughs> Unless you're Penguin! Um, he has like a million, I have like three million, I'm clearly winning. I mean, yeah, he'll have the warp drive, but I'll have a great house if there were any other buildings on Kerbal. I'll have a great room in the KSC, I tell you that much. <laughs> um, but yes, here we are, getting into the spacecraft, uh, our first pilot. Um, I, I, I'm having a hard time yeah, seeing what's going on. It's lagging quite a lot, <laughs> but it's fine. I know what happened. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to do a quick burn here. It looks kind of aggressive because I'm doing a massive burn to catch up with this, uh, well, to kind of uh, meet the spacecraft, but because it's Minmus, it has very low gravity, so it's only like 30 meters a second or something. So yeah, and there's tons of fuel on this, um, so it's fine. And it's also probe controlled with a probe kind of tucked into the pod so that it doesn't stand out too much. Um, so yeah, just going to... Do our burn, rescue some Kerbals. They're gonna die on the way back because I didn't bring enough life support. Because I'm not very. If I'd just had one as well, if I'd just gone now, I would have made 200 grand. The Kerbal would have lived. But no, that's not how things work for me. I'm always like, I'll save another one, and then they die. Um, yeah, bit of an oversight on my part, <laughs> but it's fine. Also, a bit of a spoiler. I, I, I hasn't. You haven't found this out yet, but. Yeah, I, well, what am I going to be like, oh yeah, let's hope these guys get home the old episode, and you're like, oh, we bet they die, Tape. Yeah, I mean, you're not, you're not a very good liar. Um, anyway, so yes, we will be able to at least get the spacecraft home, though. Although I think I just leave it in orbit, because I'm like, oh, the fuck with this, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, when I fail a mission, I'm very salty, and I'm like, oh, terrible. Um, and I also see if I can go and save this Kerbal, but it's like, oh, the descending node's 160 degrees. I'm just going to leave you here. And save you, well, lucky to be, better to be left on Minmus alive than to die coming back to Kerbin. But you get a little glimmer of hope until you check the oxygen supplies. We should really get an oxygen scrubber on here. And I think that is included in KSP. 
in in tag life support even the mod for life support but anyway while that's just sending super happily home we need to bring back some kerbals who will be alive when they get back well one kerbal the others are going to stay in this plane for a while um which is fine because it's a big plane you got a lot of space in there i mean sort of you've got the lab and the cockpit but whatever we're going to get a little fuel from it and then we're going to head on home we've still got like 10 science reports in the pod um, so we're going to do pretty well out of this. Um, well, I think we get like um, six, seven hundred science, and we left like a shit ton in um, the, in the lab. So, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be good. We're going to be great. I don't think I'm just going to kind of lab spam now, because uh, well, you know, got to get that science. Um, and there's thirty days between turns, so I mean, in thirty days, I'm going to have an extra. 360 science. So that's not bad at all. And I just transferred home 25 science. I'm not sure if you saw that because I've sped up this whole episode because it was very long. Um, oh yeah, and then coming back, the service module almost hits us. Well, it does hit us and almost fucks us up, but we're fine. Um, and then a thruster block explodes, which scares the hell out of me. And I do love watching that service module explode because it's connected by a very like non-heat resistant part. I think it's a materials bay. So it always just kind of disintegrates and I love watching that. Um, so that's one of my favorite things about this spacecraft. And we actually land right next to the KSC. I'm like, yay! And then I'm like, oh yeah, I don't live at the KSC. This is this is Space Race, where I'm at the KSC 2, or Green Coast is where I usually launch from now. Penguin owns the KSC, so we're going to get out and we're going to go and steal all of his secrets. Um, because he probably wouldn't sell me his secrets quite as cheaply as I sell them to him. Because I'm a nice person. <laughs> I don't know how to spin this as a good thing. Anyway, yeah, so... We're gonna we we work with this spacecraft, and I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't put a ton of life support on this. Um, let's time warp and see what happens. Um, uh, and yeah, they kind of just sort of run out of life support, and I mean they'd be probably fine for food, but without oxygen, it's kind of hard without oxygen, really. You know, I I'm a big fan of breathing, but anyway, they die. Um, so that's great. Uh, uh, but anyway, moving on to better things. This is the Titan II, my big plane Mark II, and you'll notice there aren't, uh, there's only four rapier, en rapier engines on it now, because now it is using a thermal turbojet. Yes, I'm actually using some interstellar technology. And um, we knock off a wheel there. I'm landing it next episode, so that'll be fun. I was kind of, I actually was like, I'll just revert to launch, and I was like, wait, no, I love landing with not enough wheels. It's a very good challenge, you should try it. Um, but anyway, yes, this thermal uh, turbojet uses no fuel. It just uses a uh, nuclear nuclear reactor, which is about 12 and a half tons. So it's not exactly super lightweight, but basically that means I can... It just burns intake air. That's what it does, and it passes it over a nuclear reactor. I don't exactly know how a thermal turbojet works. I mean, I'm a computer scientist, not a the kind of scientist who would know that. An engineer! <laughs> I don't even know! Anyway, uh, but yes, uh, and it actually gets a huge amount of thrust when going very fast, and it keeps, you know, keeps its thrust going up into the very high atmosphere. Um, but yes, basically, now I've been able to cut out a huge amount of fuel um, from this spacecraft, and it's about 20 tons lighter, which makes it far superior to the Titan One, the outdated technology that Penguin now has. And if he builds his spacecraft looking like this, I'm gonna break his station, because that's intellectual property theft, and I did not sell you this. But Penguin, if you wanna, if you wanna buy this, you can, you can negotiate with me, because uh, <laughs> it is awesome. Um, it, I am gonna put more fuel in it from now on, because it doesn't get to fuel with, uh, it doesn't get to orbit with that much more fuel. Um, but yeah, this is much more efficient, it's much better, even with the extra fuel it'll still be about 15 tons lighter when I've got it optimized, but this was just a test flight. Um, there was nothing really for me to do and I was like, I'm just gonna do a test flight of this. So, I did, and this will be my new spacecraft, um, for now, and then I'll keep upgrading this, and Penguin can keep buying them if he wants, but he's gonna have to pay for each upgrade, and he can make upgrades himself, but as long as they don't look like mine, because that'll make me mad. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you can see the nuclear reactor in there. It does have a little less cargo space now, but I have extended the cargo bay. But anyway, yes. So, new planes looking awesome, actually using the interstellar technology, and as uh, we upgrade our interstellar technology, which I'm really going down that path right now, um, we're going to be able to build some pretty awesome stuff, and maybe pull this out from under Penguin, unless I keep selling him my secrets. I hope you've enjoyed this, this has been episode 10 of KSP Space Race, I will see you next time.